All right, I am heading out of Charlotte, just left all my buddies, and we are headed over to my boat. And now, I'm super pumped because I'm finally gonna finish the first video that we posted on this channel uh, about our boat. I'll be able to show you some actual things that I wanted to show you that day, but uh, you know, we had the emergency sewer thing happen, so we had to bounce out. So the goal for me and this trip to the boat is to get it winterized because um, I don't want any water to freeze inside the boat. I've got to do a little bit of cleaning. I'm going to make sure that everything is hooked up and heated for the rest of the winter. Things that can't be winterized, uh, I'll just put a, heat, a space heater in there uh, for the time being. So that's what I'm going to do and I will update you as we continue on. Well, interesting. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> I'm just blindly following Google Maps. Uh, apparently the interstate I was going on is broken. So I am following this. And what's crazy is like the views on this drive are pretty wild. Um, it's great. Let me get my hand switched around. There's like these random campgrounds out here. The mountain scenery is super, super gorgeous. Like I said uh, yesterday when I was driving, everybody should go on a road trip. You all need to do road trips. nobody behind me so I'm staying in this lane there was a really cool mountain uh, that I saw the rock faces and everything Looks like there's house. This is the Pisgah. I apologize for those of you who are from here. The Pisgah National Forest, I do believe. Uh, Daniel Boone Family Campground. <clears throat> Even doing a good job of blending in the infrastructure. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I like this drive so far. Thanks, Google. Although it's going to be another like 18 miles of curviness and stuff, and I don't think that's going to be fantastic for fuel economy. So, yeah. Although this seems to be a semi route, a truck route, which is stupid AF to me. Look at these curves on this map. So, yeah. All right, back to some music. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So I made it down here yesterday. I got in and it was dark, so I didn't film anything last night because the boat was cold. Uh, when I arrived into Tennessee to our boat, the boat was like 40 degrees, so I just busted out the heater and got that rolling. But uh, made it down here and you can see that the water is definitely lower. So I figured it's been about a month. So we got to give you that little walk around of our boat finally. So um, sorry, it's dark right now. It's still early. It's like 930 here. It's 1030 normal human being time for me in Ohio. So I hate the time change down here. Uh, we are going, I'm, I'm going to, we. I'm gonna get in the engine compartment today because I have some measurements to take so I can order some parts and whatnot, but let me take you inside. So here is the main hatch entry, if you will, and I do have the heater running, so uh, yeah, I'm not gonna turn that off because it's cold uh, today. So do this as quick as possible. Okay, let me get that back closed all right so 
we walk down there's the inside of the hatch got these nice little spiral stairs that come down and it comes right to uh, the main area here and um, I really like it don't need that hat in here it is only like uh, we're only like 66 degrees in here so it's got a nice little kitchen area we've got our sink and actually a huge countertop space which is pretty nice to have uh, for this size boat and then we've got a stovetop here we um, it's a dual one does electric and alcohol and you just yeah I haven't used the alcohol part of it not sure that I'm going to thinking about maybe taking this out I have another one that's an induction so that this will just sit right on it and maybe we can have it be flush uh, so that was the thought there over here we have the table and the most important part of any uh, boat for me is the coffee maker and just Mr. Coffee chugging away every day. So nice table, a couple seats here. Back here, just to the right of the uh, stairs, if you come down the stairs here, is a, I don't have any lights on in here right now. Um, but this is another sleeping quarters and I've got a little fan tucked up in there and it's not little, it's pretty, pretty darn big. Um, yeah. So, got that going on. You know, there's plenty of storage. You can shove your shoes and stuff in there. Up here is the, this is the main area. This is where I, uh, this is where I like to sleep. Up here in the front, in the bow of the boat. It's nice and big. I like just kind of looking up and out and everything. Got this big hatch up here. So when we're away from the dock someday, maybe in the future, hopefully we can have this popped open and just look at the stars and whatnot. So we also have a bathroom in here and currently it's a disaster. So it's just kind of storage space right now. You can see we do have um, a portable AC unit and a portable space heater. Uh, do have plans to get some more like maybe permanent installed stuff but down the road do have a nice toilet down there doesn't hold a whole lot but we're winterized right now we can't really we don't really use it on board because you know it's like it's really only right here so um, kind of difficult I don't really want to have to be like hey honey uh, get out of the boat I gotta I gotta the coffee's kicking in you know uh, so we're, we're making kind of a concerted effort to just like not use it unless we're away from the dock. When we're here at the dock, we have facilities, so it's totally fine to walk. Uh, but it's got a sink of its own. It's got lights. There's a shower in here and all that. Haven't used any of that. I don't think I, I don't think we plan to do that sort of usage on this boat, uh, of this size anyway. Um, but that's kind of the inside. You do see we have some storage and whatnot for more pots and pans and um, we've got all but tons of storage up here as well you know this goes back real far uh, that was one nice thing about Chris Craft is they really kind of make use of all the extra width and everything here's all the service panels and everything you see we've got battery voltage reading right there and uh let's see what else do we have we've got tons of storage up and along the side here right now since we don't have water running down to the dock uh ben we've got some water already down here from last time we started to plan ahead also had some smaller box fans those are going to get stored up in here is huge storage for like all the uh big buoys and whatnot uh, it's actually pretty cold in there, so we'll probably get that closed. But then there's the old head unit, and it's fine and sounds fine, I guess. But, you know, we'll eventually up upgrade that, I guess. But, um, yes, let me get back in the light. So that's pretty much the uh, interior tour. All I'm going to be doing today right now is I'm going to clean up the rest of inside here, and then I'm going to go outside to the engine compartment and start opening that up and uh, I'll show you guys what's going on in there. 
All right, I figure I'm gonna bring you guys on a true cold start. This thing has been sitting here for a month now since we were last running it. I haven't done anything except open it up. It is like 37 degrees or something outside. I think the water temperature is still in the, actually, let me double check, I have my thermometer. The water temp is still 57. So that's awesome. It really won't get a whole lot cooler. It will drop some more temperature, but um, you can see it is very low back there. But <sighs> I'm a little nervous, but she seems to be a little bit more cold blooded and likes to fire up. So uh, yeah, so if you, if you guys are not familiar, this is our 1988 Chris Craft Amero Sport 262. She is just a little about 30 feet long, is not uh, eight and a half feet wide, nine and a half feet wide, nine and a half feet wide. And we're a big boat. We sleep a couple people and uh, that is a Chevy 350. When I, after I fire it up and let it warm up a little bit, I'll, we'll get back down there. Uh, I'm gonna let it run for a little while and then it'll cool back off and then I'm gonna do the winterizing where I just drain some water out of the block and whatnot. Uh, so uh, let's just find out. Uh, you guys don't want to look at me. Okay. Let's see. A couple pumps. Gotta put the key in. <laughs> so I'm sure it's going to need to get primed for a sec. just a sec to sit but it's gonna go show you some gauges here. We got tack starting to come up. Temperature will start moving. Pressures, oil pressure is looking good. We got some voltage. There is gaso line in here. Woo! All right, I'm gonna let her sit here and just cold idle just for a low idle. I'm going to make sure that this stays close to a thousand RPM. Because it's cold and I want it to be happy, you know? I'm not trying to blow this motor up. Oh, come on! Maybe we'll keep her a little higher! <laughs> Don't stall on me, honey. All right, all right. 
Good, good girl, good girl. Woo! Hey, keep an eye on this engine for me for a sec. Keep an eye on that. I saw the water needle move a hair. Boulder is head tacky for a sec. Oh, what a good rumble! Oh, it's alive. It's alive. I'm not sure if you guys know how happy that makes me feel. Now I just got to get the steering tackled because uh, this thing runs great now that I've done all that work to it and gotten it tuned up. Um, so it'll it'll run fantastic uh, and shift good, go into gear, did all the maintenance on that out drive already. Uh, wish I would have recorded part of that, but now I know how to take this apart. Um, Hopefully I don't have to do it again, but I really want to get the steering sorted out on this so that we can be, Laura and I can be going and cruising this year. Um, woo! She's still getting the temp. And then I got to measure the, uh, I got to measure for the um, steering actuator because I'm going to get an electric steering actuator and I'm going to set that up and, uh, Hopefully I'm gonna be able to show you guys how that all works too, because uh, I'm, I'm tired of this hydraulic crap. Uh, I'm tired of the cables. I think the cables are junk because it still requires the power steering pump, which is hydraulic and a parasitic loss on your engine. Uh, so it's all just junk to me. So I'm just trying to figure out a different way that seems like it's gonna be a little bit easier to maintain. Because boats, man, they just don't get used, you know? And uh, when they don't get used, they just, they just break and that cable just gets fragile and stuff. I'm trying to let you guys see me, but the sun is so freaking bright. Um, so I'm going to finish letting this thing warm up and then I'm going to shut her down after it's done. And uh, we'll probably go check out some shorelines and whatnot because uh, I'm going to let this cool back down before I go and pop the hoses off and do my shutdown method where I just turn off the fuel. Um, you know, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, cool, I'm super, super pumped that it fired up though. It really didn't even take that long. Look, this thing's already got a comp cam in her. what I'm going to be measuring. This is the tiller handle here that's actually the steering. So we'll just like figure out a, uh, maybe I can mount it here, like the back end, and it'll just push it back and forth over here with a support bracket or something. Um, I, I don't know yet, uh, but maybe uh, with this coming off, since that's going to be pulled out, that's the original steering crap. So if I pull that out, Maybe I can just bolt directly to that with a piece of metal and get it to come over. Or just like tie off of this bracket or something. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not a guy to just go poking holes in a boat.
All right. Let me get Mr. Stink Bug out of here. Woo! Okay. Okay, so I'm finally down here in the engine compartment to show you guys this stuff, which hopefully is not going to be in here that terribly long. Um, my ultimate goal is to make this boat fully electric. Oh, that's the rattling. Sorry, distraction. So this thing burns a lot of gas, and this is a 100-gallon fuel tank, so because this thing's a 350, it's so big that you can surely put an electric motor in here that we can totally adapt up to this spline shaft input that goes into the uh, housing for the outdrive. I don't see why that should be a problem. And then where this fuel tank is, we could totally stack all the batteries we could want. Uh, so that's ultimately my goal. So one thing that I want to check on is this uh, steering here. I think what I'm going to have to do is pop this pin out maybe because I need to um, measure this and uh, ooh, you know what maybe one thing I might be able to do is get that steering wheel to bite but uh, probably not Ugh. plus that's going to be in and out nope totally not worth it um, so, bummer. Oof. <clears throat> okay, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start popping a couple of things off. I have a pipe. Whoops. Yep. I start seeing my pipes that I need to pull off there. And one thing that I started to do on the boat was just buy tools specifically for the boat. Um, because it's a pain to have to keep bringing a toolbox back and forth. So I just went to Harbor Freight and got another toolbox. This is like additional parts and tools and stuff. Uh, a vacuum uh, gauge for the carburetor to set the carb up correctly, which we'll, I'll probably end up doing again. Uh, but it started up, you guys saw, so that was badass. This side up on my... Harbor Freight Toolkit. All right. So you see, I've got quite the toolkit for this, but I don't need anything down here really. I need this. All I'm doing right now is uh, pulling this pin out that's a safety. Uh, all right, there we go. There's that. This goes right there. And now, you see, I can move my out drive around. So what I'm going to do, because I'm, because I'm trying to do something totally new and unique what I want is an electric actuator I want electric steering drive-by wire essentially so what I'm gonna do is make sure I figure out where center is and I what I'm gonna ultimately do is hook this back up because you see I'm just moving that by hand and I don't want like it to get wavy and it just totally destroy that but you see, I can move this uh, pretty well. So because we want to go more or less like lower speeds and stuff, um, I'm thinking like 450 pounds of force is plenty, you know, especially if we were able to somehow get up to plane. I'm going to guess that I'm able to put... I'm definitely not having to put, you know, 400 something pounds on it, but I'll probably end up tightening some more stuff ultimately, but I need to find center. And then I'm just going to measure from center to 
over to the far side and this side to find its full range of motion. Put that there. I need my rags. Sweet. Good, I'm still I'm glad I still have some. <laughs> okay. Do I have my tape measure? Oh. Damn. Okay, well, I mean, we I guess we can get pretty close because they come in some different sizes, but... Burger, burger, herg. Okay, we're going to call that six inches. So six inches of travel, so that's what I'm going to look for is a minimum of six inches of travel distance. Uh, on my on my actuator and then I'll be able to hook that up to probably a Raspberry Pi and have a touch screen in the dash and make a little interface that will allow me to um, essentially just do very easy easy steering um, have like a quick button maybe that I could have that says like uh, fast center like uh, just if I don't know where, if I don't know where it's pointing, like on a big, on a larger boat, on a larger yacht, you have that sort of uh, understanding of your vessel. It has sensors and stuff that show you that on a screen. So that's something that I'm interested in having myself. All right, so that's that. Beautiful, that's fine. Every tool is a hammer, unless it's an adjustable wrench. Or every tool is a hammer, unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a pry bar also. <laughs> or something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here and pull off this uh, hose, the water hose. And drain out the, the water from the block. I might have to remember to bring some WD-40 down here and just hose these tools down. But they'll be fine. Okay. Pull this off. Dang it. Do that one, let it drain. I'm going to do this one. I just want to make sure I get the most water out of the block that I can. Um, my raw water intake is gonna is not a thing that can be emptied unless I have the boat out of the water. Come on. You really want to make sure you get it out of your water pump, which is where I'm currently uh, wrestling with. This is totally loose. It's just a very tight fit here. It's just a little caught on the bottom.
Come on, wiggle jiggle. Baby, wiggle jiggle. Oh, goodness. Come on, honey. Get off there. Ha. Ah, there we go. I think that's broken loose now. Thank you. Okay. Oof. And now since it's draining all down into my sump, I'll just turn on my bilge pump and we'll pump her all out. Let that drain. Oof. Okay. I think there's one more that I did last year and that was over here. Put this guy back on. Boom, beautiful. Thought I heard someone walking down my dock. Just hearing stuff. One of the reasons why I want to do electric, huh? Because I probably won't have to water cool it or any of that crap. So we can probably just do a big ignoring of that. Why are you? <sighs> Dang, man. I didn't realize that. Fuel line's too close. Huh. I don't remember it being like that last year. I mean, I guess it must have, because I didn't change it at all. Now, holy crap. Well, if I do this, I 
just need to get the hose clamp up in there now. Holy crap, what the fuck is this shit? I do not understand how that has happened. <sighs> Boats, man. Like, that's what I'm talking about. No one likes them because they're stupid. God damn it. <sighs> that was probably why it was gurgly. So, WTF, man. No way this works. Nope. Fuck. Everything's always so hard on a boat. So much harder than it should be. For just really no reason, seemingly. It's just like, hey, how can we screw over the end person and make him only have to bring it in to a dealership only ever? Oh, you know what? I think I remember what I did last time now. Totally unscrewed this all the way and wrapped it around it and just started it again. Not ideal, but whatever, right? Because boat. Well, because anything with... Because anything with some sort of engine that requires cooling like this. Stupid. Now, with your left and right hand at the same time, pinch the clamp together. With your other right hand, start it with the screwdriver. With your other left hand, please go ahead and touch your nose and pat your tummy. I feel like that's all I'm doing. Holy crap, okay, now I can kind of stand. Can we go electric? You know, water is the only thing you gotta really pay attention to. Fuel is fine, but I gotta get a new vent line. Note to future self before I do this again. Vent line. Okay, so that's all for these. Boom. Heh. 
Okay. And now, Might not be getting this one out this year. Ooh, hey, it did. Sweet. This is just to double check to make sure it's out of this exhaust manifold here. The other one is round. I don't know what the previous people did to that, but poor thing. Okay, sweet. Empty. Beautiful. That's all I want to see is it's empty. That means the other side is going to be good. Some shit inside there. Not amazing. Nearly there. Cool. I'm not going to go any tighter than that. Boom. Let's get this thing buttoned up. <laughs> 